And good morning. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald, and this is day two of our coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference right here from the Grand Hotel. It has been a wonderful week so far. We had a lot of talk yesterday about uh, the business climate here in Michigan, also talking about education and talking about the city of Detroit. Another thing on the, on the agenda really is talking about regionalism and that kind of cooperation that we can get from the entire region in southeast Michigan about moving the state forward, and no one better to talk about regionalism than the three county execs who are joining me right now this morning. Al Brooks Patterson from Oakland County, Bob Facano from Wayne County, and Mark Hackle from Macomb County. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank Glad you. to be here. All right, so um, I could start this entire interview saying, could you define um, regionalism for me? But I think I'd rather jump right in and say, there's a huge, a huge subject matter of water department. And, and I think um, spinning off the Detroit water department, big decisions that you've had to make in dealing with the Detroit bankruptcy process. And there's a lot of sticking points. And I'm gonna start with you, Brooks, because you have been talking about it uh, most off. And I want you to, I guess, first off, make your case of why Oakland County does not want to dive into this agreement. Well, first of all, we don't have all the details. We don't have all the research. We've been asking for over nine months, give us more financials so we can, we can just figure out what we're getting into. Uh, I can only talk about one half. Uh, the one half of this whole water debate is now under a gag order by the court. The top half is wide open for comment. That deals with the attempt to have the <coughs> suburbs uh, accelerate their payments uh, for their water bills and, and, and make the pension payments for the Detroit Water Sewer Board pensioners. Um, and so right now the bill would be normally around 18 million. And next year it's going to go from 18 million to 65 million. Now, right, you know I am choking on that number. And I think why well, the rest of these guys might be choking. I can't speak for them. And then the year after that it goes to 45 for nine years. And if you add up the first year plus the last nine years, it comes up to 450 million dollars, which is what they're short in funding the grand bargain. So somebody came up with this great idea. Hey, we can. We can raise the 450 we need to make all the numbers work. Let's just shove it onto the suburbs. But wouldn't it be a good deal, and Bob, let me ask you, that finally Wayne County, Macomb, and Oakland can buy into this system and have partial ownership of, and, and control of this system as well? There is. And, you know, this uh, because of the bankruptcy, you're up against uh, some deadlines that normally you probably wouldn't be up against. I think Judge Rhodes is going to make decisions in this, and they call it technically a cram down that could eventually say this is the way the system is going to run. I think that uh, uh, the legislature and I know the governor have, have looked at this and I think to me personally the authority is the way that's probably going to be the best because if you have a private entity that's going to uh, uh, run this, uh, you're going to have someone that's going to accelerate those costs one way or another. Their first obligation is the shareholders is what it should be, but they're going to accelerate it and since they have a monopoly, any of those costs are going to be immediately be able to pass it on uh, to the, to the ratepayers. Brooks is right, and I know Mark agrees, is that everybody wants more information about what is actually the costs of some of these uh, uh, situations. And I don't know, uh, there's mediation that's going on, and I'm, I'm, I'm the, Wayne County filed the mediation order, so we're wanting this uh, process to work. I don't think that Judge Rhodes was such a large asset is just going to leave it out there and say, after the bankruptcy, we'll deal with this uh, later on. Plus, there probably is room for negotiations now because they've been able to put together more uh, uh, funding sources in terms of, from what I understand, of the grand bargain, and you may not have to need the uh, exact amount that uh, Mr. Orr is asking for in the bankruptcy. I, I think that a lot of concern about this, Mark, also is timing and the fact that there is not a lot of time to make this deal. And when you are entering into this kind of deal, that you want to make sure you do your due, due diligence and get all the information possible. And that something like this could take years to negotiate with the expansive, I mean, the largesse of the system. You're absolutely right. And again, we want to be regional but we want to be responsible. And uh, let's face it, this isn't about the regionalizing of the water system. If that really were the issue, we'd better, we would have worked on this long ago and we would be taking our time to do our due diligence and do it right. This is a rush because of bankruptcy. There's no question about it. Our concern, and as we've been talking with Oakland County about this, is for the rate payer. So we want somebody that's going to come in and really take a look at this. The numbers that are flying all over the place and the conversations that have been out there, uh, boy, I tell you what, they're all over the board. But I have not had anybody really look at this and put to the, the forefront the rate payers and how the rates 
infrastructure is going to look, as well as the infrastructure issues. I don't disagree that this would be a good thing for the region to have it regionalized, but how it's being pushed our way and how it's going to be crammed uh, down our throats has been a real problem for me because really we haven't been able to be responsible as elected officials to look at these numbers to give a, a good uh, assessment to tell our ratepayers here, this is a good thing and here's the reasons why. Okay, Perks, I want to numbers. ask you, wh what's the latest conversation you've had on this? Did they come to you because now this has been the talk of, of the conference for the last 24 hours or so. What kind of conversations have you had recently? Well, that's, all, that's all I'm talking about up here is the water board. Does the governor call you and say, all right, Brooks, let, let's talk about this? Uh, well, we're, we're passing memos back and forth, white papers, if you will. Uh, no, he didn't call. Uh, his, his chief of staff did, did as much more. And other people have called and said, okay, we understand why you're, you're taking such umbrage with the numbers, but, you know, uh, we can all work out. <coughs> we're saying, look, uh, no, nobody's putting those numbers out there, but I think uh, Mark and I are saying, look, uh, you're saying, well, let's, let's accelerate the payments. What that means is we're going to take 30 years of payments and cram it down into 10 years. Of course, uh, the payments are going to get larger, like I said, from 18 million to 65 million. But, and, and then they're saying, but Brooks, uh, you're really going to experience a, a cut in your, in your cost. You know, I, I didn't get past the third grade, but even then I knew the math didn't work. It just doesn't work. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about how, it, because uh, I think a large theme of the conference has been Detroit's, Detroit's comeback, and as the, the counties that involve Detroit and then ring around, how has the bankruptcy process impacted your counties? And I'm going to start with you, Mark. Well, I want to say it had really impacted Macomb County. There's great things happening as far as our budgets and our finances. We're seeing population growth. If there's been an impact, it's been the influx of population in Macomb County. And with that comes people with certain needs and some challenges that we're trying to meet. But they're coming to Macomb County because of, you know, there's a better opportunities for affordable housing, quality of life, having opportunities for good or better educational opportunities, as well as public safety. So the impact has been the growth in population in Macomb County. But unfortunately, it's a redistribution of population, which is not good for the region. So what we're we're trying to do is get people on a parallel path if and when they come out of bankruptcy all the conversation and negative issues about the bankruptcy the water issues there really is a lot of good things that are happening within the region itself so Macomb County wants people to recognize you know we add value to the region but the region adds value to Macomb County how do we start moving to discussion to really lift up this this entire region so that we're being com more competitive with other regions around the world for the resources that are necessary for growth so you know I think the impact has been the less less of a conversation about the good things that are going on among the various counties and beyond just our counties to really start uh, moving a conversation in a different direction. Bob. Could you imagine the influx of population in Macomb County if they had indoor plumbing? You know, <laughs> you, you, we, could, we couldn't get a, he, he just made a swipe at Android. Did you hear him? No, he I didn't. He said, do you imagine the, I'm not even going to say it. Can you imagine said, the influx of population in the Macomb if they had indoor plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you couldn't, couldn't get away without a swipe. All right, Bob, Bob, Bob yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, you know, there's Talk been so much attention uh, on the bankruptcy pr uh, uh, process and proceeding. There's other things that are, like Mark said, and I'm sure Brooks would uh, confirm, there's a lot of other positive things going on in the region. Uh, you know, I, I can talk about 300 million that has been invested in the Aerotropolis area in the past uh, uh, two years. I think the one thing, though, is that everybody now is optimistic about a fresh start. And it's, it, it sort of replays a little bit what happened in the auto industry. You saw Chrysler, you saw General Motors come out of it, and, and, and you saw things start to really start to pick up. And I think there's this optimism uh, that with the fresh start with Detroit, you're going to see the region really rise up. And uh, there's a lot of people that uh, uh, love Detroit, care about it nationally, have come from this area, and they want to see it succeed. Brooks? You know, uh, I think we all would like to see Detroit come back. But there's a, there's a, and I mean that sincerely. I was born and raised in Detroit, educated there. Uh, but at what price to the suburbs? I mean, nobody in the suburbs had anything to do with the mismanagement, the fraud, the waste, and yet we're being asked to pick up millions and millions of debt because of that fraud, waste, and mismanagement. And there's a, there's a tolerance of you know, that you can't cross. And I think uh, what we're asking to pay for the uh, pensions for the Detroit Water and Sewer Board pensioners, uh, something like, uh, well, it's going to be a, uh, in the billion, billion something, billion eight of us. But if one fell swoop, the suburb is going to be picking up $450 million over the next 10 years. Uh, you're going to see a lot of pushback. All right, um, uh, before we, we wrap everything up, what's the most in interesting conversation that you've had so far at the conference, Mark? Well, it's been about water and uh, obviously the water department figure out you know, where we're headed with that. But the other thing that uh, sometimes gets left out of the mix is the issue dealing with uh, those that are retirees out of the city of Detroit. Many of those people live in Macomb County and the uh, outlying suburbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to have a huge impact. If for some reason their pensions are cut, their health care is cut, uh, boy, I tell you what, living in Macomb County, that becomes a challenge for them, making their house payments and obviously 
uh, buying goods and, and services within the county, some of them looking for another job to try to make ends meet. So we're very concerned about what's going on in the city of Detroit, in particular those that were made a promise uh, that now aren't going to be, uh, I guess, held, held uh, given good on those promises that they were given on the city of Detroit. So I think, unfortunately, less conversation about really the people that are impacted or affected by this and a lot more conversation about how do we just resolve this with the bankruptcy uh, attorney and Mr. Orr. Um, I, I'm very interested in this uh, moving along so we can start doing some good things with the city of Detroit. All right, Bob, when people come up to you, what's the one question that they're asking you? Uh, they, are they asking yesterday. about Wayne County finances? <laughs> Actually, that has dissipated a little bit. There's been a lot of... Uh, uh, concern about it and now it looks like not only the wolf has gone away from the door it's gone completely into the forest uh, and the issue now of an EM and consent order pretty well has dissipated the accumulated deficit probably has pretty well dissipated at this point and they're concentrating on the uh, structural deficit which we believe we have remedies for in our plan that's been approved by uh, tentatively approved by the state so people were sort of amazed that you know, three months ago they said there was nothing that would be able to be possible to happen. Not only has the state tentatively approved it, uh, the commission approved it, and there's even additional more money than was uh, originally anticipated. What are people asking you most about? I, I, besides I mean, water. Like Johnny one note, but the been on the island now for about 24 hours, and I have not had a conversation other than Detroit bankruptcy and specifically uh, the costs associated with the Detroit Water and Sewer Board. Well, it's something that's going to be impacting all of us as we move forward, and um, we'll see where we are in the fall. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Mark Hackle, Bob Ficano, and Brooks Patterson. We appreciate it. And we're going to continue now with our coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference.